is oh, a no, one. No, Wait. No, the mic's on. The mic's on now? Yeah. All right, cool. This is a one six scale prototype of the ultralight I will probably be building in the next few weeks. Like a giant RC plane? Yep. This is a pretty much a scale replica of what I will be building. I have the design mocked up in CAD. So I will be building this airplane. Also, um, someone mentioned that I should do a GoFundMe for a parachute. So I think I'm going to be legitimately be doing that. So if you guys are interested, there will be a link to that somewhere in the description. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to live and make more videos, feel free to fund the uh, parachute operation. Why do you need a parachute? In case I do stall testing or something and then fall off, you know. Wait, you're getting in it? Oh yeah, I'm getting in it. <laughs> what? I'm going to be flying in this, so. Uh, the design, yeah, it's all CAD. Uh, I think 20, 22 foot wingspan, uh, 17, 17 feet long biplane so I can do lots of rigging so hopefully the wings don't fall off because I'm getting all this testing and data out of this plane so I'm trying to figure out how it behaves. Well, it was fun working with you but uh, yep. it's nice to know you everyone like on YouTube. Job. More on that later, let's go shopping at Lowe's. And you crashed it. And that's why you need a parachute. <laughs> See, Sam? This is why I will not let you fly <laughs> my ultralight. <laughs> I think you oh, killed it. Oh, no. Me. Peter! Make sure you get your parachute. Go fund Peter. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm going to let you fly it. This is the... Well, yeah, that it's not designed to be crashed. It's just for some simple testing. Oops. <laughs> uh, I guess you're ahead of the curve there. Let's go to your airplane. Okay. The girl's on her right foot. I think I'll be able to get away the Gorilla Glue for just some parts of the fuselage. There will be actual epoxy in this T88, the high strength stuff. But for now, I can get away with this. Oh, I don't know what to do. It actually looks like it'd be pretty good to build a coffin a fuselage out of. <laughs> Shut up, Sam. It's shiny, look. Yeah, I think I got everything. The jig's up. Let's get out of here. Okay, well, I will see you later. I'll be here for a bit more. Oh, God. Shut up, Sam. I do have to say, for a production side of things, this is probably going to be a little bit, like, less edited for me. Mainly because I'm going to be kind of busy building this airplane. I really want to finish it in, like, about a month and a half or so, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about editing too much, but I will probably do upload a little more content as far as keeping up with the progress of this thing, too. So that's a new thing as well. I'm going to start tracing stuff out. project no oh, my better hi don't you want to see my last moments on earth <laughs> building an airplane <laughs> before i'm dead <laughs> oh my god by the hands of my own creation i gotta i gotta go buy some more engine for this guy put that guy with you okay no i don't want him to die and this this old man too right here that put him with you all right no room for him
crappy bolt montage is over. <laughs> what do you think? It looks like an airplane. Looks better than the pictures. Yeah, it should be fine, I'm thinking, as far as most of the stuff. I mean, there is T-88 aircraft, uh, well, it's not really aircraft, here, but structural epoxy. And everything is boxed in, from what I can tell, by looking at other airplanes, so... It should be fine. I really have to do some rigorous stress testing. I've already kind of done some by staying on the uh, empennage, and it didn't buckle or break or crack or anything. I'm thinking if it can handle that weight, it's not going anywhere. In reality, though, for this airplane, here, you take the camera. In reality, for in-flight force, it's stop them with the dog, film this. Okay. Don't want to fall, though. But in reality, there's a little bit of down pressure on the uh, elevator surface just to keep the plane riding because of the way the plane's balanced. Because the center of lift is behind the center of gravity, so it's always trying to tuck forward. So the elevator pushes down on this surface. Look at the little dog. But there's only this minimum amount of pressure here if the plane is balanced correctly, and that's what the center of gravity check and test is for. And that's what I figured out with this model. And the way it flies, it trims out really well. So it's pretty neutral. More airplane jargon. What are you, what is he looking He's at? so cute. People are, are going to not understand anything in this video. Oh look, big dog. Go see little dog. Go see little doggo. Little dog. Lucky, look at the sky pupper. The sky pupper is what I'm naming this airplane too. It's the sky pupper. They're not cooperating. Yeah, they are. Lucky still still doesn't understand the purpose of the little dog. He's kind of scared of the little dog, which is funny. He has the high ground. Okay, what else? Hmm, let's see. I think I should cover some more topics. Oh, let's cover the airplane design, at least a little bit for now. If you guys want to see a little more in-depth detail later on, let me know. What are you filming? Hold on. You should say, I have an idea, and... I have an idea. Oh. And the plug fell out. <laughs> plug it back in. Oh my gosh. That shocked yourself. But, like, it's perfect for... Right. I have an idea. <laughs> yeah, that's not that great. Okay, but as far as the airplane design goes, I've done a little bit of testing here. I put some thought into the aircraft structure and design. Now, here's the kicker, though. Don't let them fall out. I don't want my baby to get hurt. My little pupper baby. But the kicker about this airplane design is the reason for the biplane is because I can run rigging, which is a cabling, to further balance the structure. Because I really want to do like aluminum for the spars, but for most ultralights, at least aircraft designs such as the Mini Max and a couple other wooden designs with wooden uh, spars and stuff, they use spruce. But unfortunately, spruce is really expensive, like really cost prohibitively expensive. So I'm going to go with poplar. This is not poplar, that is a um, birch plywood. This is actual uh, Sitka spruce. Is that how you pronounce it? Sitka? Sitka? I don't know. It's one or the other. Sitka spruce? Yeah, Sitka spruce. But I'm using poplar for the spars, which another guy did an independent test where he was uh, taking samples and stress testing them. And apparently poplar is str is stronger than the spruce, so we're going to go with poplar because it's cheaper and I can get it at the lows. That is a popular choice. Popular choice. Okay, but back to the airplane design. The twin engines is because of uh, safety and size. Whereas if I were to go to one engine, I would have limited choices such as like the Rotax 277 for 447. But those are really big engines. And the problem is you have to build an airplane to hold a big engine, which has to be structurally sound to hold the big engine. And I don't really want to deal with any of that. So I'm going to go with two hobby grade motors. Uh, I have Hobby King on the line right now. They haven't delivered anything yet, but I think they might actually be sponsoring some of these larger projects, which is super cool because I could, you know, financially use some help with that. I have EFCs I'm probably getting from a friend. And batteries, I think they're going to send batteries too, but we'll, we'll see what they send in a few days. So that's a, the nice thing is I can actually use hobby equipment. And this falls under part 103, which is ultralight uh, class. So if it's under 254 pounds, it's not subject to any sort of regulation whatsoever. You just have to abide by the FAA rules as far as flying goes, which is, you know, like no flying over people or blah, 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 and things like that. Big list of legal documents with that. Let's see, what else? Doggy. Oh my god, it's so cute. I don't want to film you, I just want to film the dog. Are you my little aviator? Oh, if I haven't mentioned it, I would really like to come home to my pupper, but I'm going to go flying with or without the parachute. So the the uh, GoFundMe for the parachute is coming because I really, really do intend to do a lot of a stall and spin testing, but up at higher altitudes where the structure really should be fine. I've 
very good faith in the structure. I have some questions about some things as far as the sparge goes, so I'll probably try to consult as many aero designers as possible about that. Even though I looked at other aircraft such as a uh, a champ in a... Oh, what is it? A champ in a... Uh, what's the other airplane? It's another little wooden airplane. Whatever, they're small. Aronka something something. And really, there's just a few little bolts in there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this up. That'll probably come in a later video where I discuss the wing spar design when I get to that. Right now we're going to finish the fuselage and all that. But I'm really good feeling that I can hold up to probably 3,000 pounds in a stack test or more, which is quite a few Gs. That should be fine. As far as flying on one engine, going back to the design, it actually handles really well with this one engine. We'll probably cover that in another video, though, where I can actually cut the engine off and maintain level flight and even gain altitude on just one motor. Man, that is a mouthful. I really don't know what I'm doing at this point in this video. Yeah, you talk a lot. Let's go fly it. You can't. It's not done yet. Boo. All right. All right. What else? What? You got any more questions or anything else on the break? Yeah, I saw that. That's not structural. So yeah, I'm quit pulling on that. That's just purely meant to hold or be the top. Actually, it's not really meant to be anything. Oh, the fuselage is going to be glassed too, so it's going to get um. What's a what's the thickness of that cloth? Uh, it's the two ounce. Two ounce cloth. I'll probably go with two ounce in some of this section. Transitions over to like maybe a four or six ounce for the rest of the fuselage. It also adds some structure there. Some carbon fiber twine or what is it, tote will be wrapped around this thing, kind of like stockings or whatever, like fishnet stockings. Okay. And it'll make that really strong, even though this thing is already ridiculously strong and it can hold a lot of weight. So we will do that. Actually, let's do a quick stress test. You, stand over there. Stand inside of it. I'm going to stand on the tail. You're heavier than me, so it should not go down. Just to show the strength of this, I'm going to go sit on this end now. And it's totally fine. There's nothing under there supporting it. And this is actually stressed the wrong way, too. Because... The airplane is going to actually is it stressed the wrong way? Oh no, no, it's stressed the right way this time. We're pushing down on the on the uh, empennage because that's what the elevator basically does in level flight. Just a few pounds of pressure. Obviously, a nose heavy airplane has more pressure down here because I got to pull back on the elevator cable. No one's probably gonna pay attention to any of this at this point. Maybe they're fast forwarding through the video, but the pupper is really cute. But this is totally fine. It's not gonna break. And let's go move on to the next thing. Okay, let's go like it. So, I guess this wraps up episode one of the uh, aeroplane design build. Uh, as far as aero engineering and comments goes, please really leave any really decent comment. I mean, I don't really care what you really leave at this point, but helpful comments will be very appreciated. If there's something seriously wrong with the aircraft design, let me know immediately. Don't I, fly, you're going to die. No, but if you're just going to give me the, uh, yeah, that's going to kill you comments, I mean, yeah, leave them if you want, but I'm really just going to ignore them at this stage. But if you have something legitimate, like, don't use those harvester bolts. It's obviously going to break. Drywall screws? Are you kidding me? Because I've seen some terrible airplane designs that feature stuff like that, and man, that is not going to fly. But I do have some hobby experience building large aircraft. I, the largest one was that cargo plane that just has a 16-foot wingspan. And that survives just fine as far as... Oh, he's yawning. That survives as far as flight goes, and it has there's been no failures there. So that was actually also a test to see if I can build an airplane that large without having mechanical failures. Just, and... Uh, stuff like that. Even though if I look back at that wing design, it's pretty terrible as far as the spark goes. But this is a little bit more legitimate. I've done a little, my little bit of homework. We are going to buy AN grade bolts for this. I'm not really going to mess around with any hardware, hardware stuff. Flight speed should be 20, to, uh, like 18 to probably 35 miles an hour, which would be ex extremely slow. So if I were to actually run into some trees, I'll probably survive. But I guess that wraps up the first video. I got some work to do as far as making the elevators and stuff goes. Time frame wise, I really want to have this flying mid-September, so it'll probably be about five or six videos of this thing. It's a big project, and I will see you guys later. Bye bye. Hi, Mr. Lucky. Dog is my co-pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexia. What do you think, Mr. Toby?